Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mitzi from the Department of Human Services, DHS, Division of Child Care. We will, we will begin our webinar. Hope you all are having an amazing day. After the webinar, participants will have knowledge of health risk and food insecurity rates in childhood in the state of Arkansas. Identify a variety of healthy snacks to meet the USDA healthy eating pattern and discuss offering unfamiliar fruits and vegetables and creating wellness policies. Childhood obesity increased rapidly during the 1980s and 1990s. Although recent data indicates childhood obesity is not increasing, rates have stabilized. Arkansas shows no change in childhood obesity. It is not increasing or decreasing. Overweight or obese preschool age children are five times more likely to be overweight or obese as adults. Black and Latino children have a higher rate of obesity than do their white peers. Obesity can cause serious health results for children, including high blood pressure and diabetes. Large social and psychological effects can be seen in children that are overweight. Energy balance is eating enough calories and getting enough physical activity for normal growth and maintain a healthy body weight. Child care programs play a key role in the prevention of childhood obesity. Your child care food program can support healthy development in children, an environment that nurtures and promotes healthy habits in children. By following healthy meal patterns and exercise activities helps children create healthy habits. The new USDA meal pattern is promoting a greater variety of vegetables and fruit, more whole grains, and less added sugar and saturated fat. The meal pattern helps you to know what portion size to serve from each food group. Healthy activities should be included in program activities such as celebrations. In Arkansas, child food insecurity rate is 25%, and overall food insecurity rate is 18.4%. Children in Arkansas have the second highest rate of childhood food insecurity in the U.S. In 2015, food insecurity was two times higher in households with Blacks, 27%, or Hispanics, 24%, than in those headed by Whites, 14%. Food insecure homes have problems creating healthy behaviors. Therefore, children may be at high risk for obesity. They do not have access to nutrient dense or a variety of foods. Children's health is affected by food insecurity. Food insecure children are more likely to be hospitalized, have iron deficiency and other chronic health problems. These children have increased stomach aches, headaches and colds. Children in food insecurity may be more likely to have oral health problems. Behavior problems are often seen in children with food insecurity at school. Poor academic performance and increased suspensions from school can lead to lower graduation rates. Mental health problems are also associated with food insecurity. We will review the 2015-2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans. The foundation of the guideline promotes health to, the, to lower the risk of chronic disease by consuming a variety of nutrient-dense foods and physical activity. The changes made to the USDA meal patterns are based on the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. The new meal patterns must be met by October 1, 2017. We will talk more about ways to increase the nutritional quality of snacks offered to children using the guidelines. The 2015-2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans has five guidelines. The overall guideline encourages healthy eating patterns to reduce the risk of chronic disease. Individuals will need to change their food and beverage choices to make a healthy pattern. Everyone has a role in helping to create and support healthy eating patterns. Cultural and traditional preferences should be included across all food groups when making meal patterns. An eating pattern is the combination of foods and beverages that is eaten over time. The USDA food pattern is an example. Nutrient-dense foods and beverages provide vitamins and minerals and other beneficial substances that have positive health effects. Offering many different foods and beverages over a week creates a meal pattern with variety. The key recommendations give more information on how to follow the five guidelines for individuals. 
A healthy eating pattern includes a variety of vegetables, fruits, mainly whole fruit, grains, half whole grains, fat-free or low-fat dairy, and a variety of protein foods. A healthy eating pattern limits saturated fats and trans fats, added sugars, and sodium. Consume less than 10% of calories per day from added sugars and saturated fats. Consume less than 2,300 milligrams per day of sodium. These limits can help individuals make healthy eating patterns within calorie limits. All Americans should be meeting the physical activity guidelines for Americans to help promote health and reduce the risk of chronic disease. Children need more, no more than 1,500 to 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day, depending on how old they are. American children and adolescents are eating foods high in sodium that far exceed the daily recommended limit. Eating foods higher in sodium is associated with higher blood pressure. Eating lower sodium foods can lower blood pressure somewhat in children. Lower blood pressure during childhood can lower the risk for high blood pressure as an adult. Taste preferences for high sodium foods is developed when children are offered high sodium foods. When children eat low sodium foods, then low sodium foods are preferred. Many of the top 10 sodium sources for children and adolescents are eaten as snacks. Every food choice is a way to move toward a healthy eating pattern. Creating healthier snack choices through the week and a day can make a big difference. Let's look at some ideas for realistic small changes that you can include in your snack meal pattern. Healthy snacks are nutrient dense. Typical snacks can contain added calories from added sugars or solid fats. They may be added during processing or preparing the food. Changing from a typical snack to a healthy nutrient dense snack will help maintain energy balance. In the dairy group, a nutrient dense choice is unflavored low fat or fat free milk instead of whole milk. Whole milk has about two times more calories than low fat or fat free milk per cup serving. Most children have dairy intakes below the recommended amounts. Most children's intake of protein foods meet the recommended amounts. The intake of seafood is low for children. Lean meats are ground beef, 90% lean, sirloin, round steak, roast from chuck and shoulder, pork loin, boneless, skinless chicken breast, and turkey cutlets, low-fat luncheon meats. Seafood includes salmon, tuna, trout, cod, perch, salapia, and shellfish such as shrimp. Processed meat like hot dog, sausage, ham, and luncheon meats are usually high in fat and sodium. Okay, so now that we have some background, I'm going to look at this slide here. We're going to be talking about some alternatives to help you in your programs. So choose health, healthier meals and meat, I'm sorry, choose healthier meats and meat alternatives when planning snacks instead of meats and meat alternatives high in calorie, fat, and sodium. The first column here we have that Velveeta, which is a non-reimbursable item, you can purchase this to enhance your meals. However, having that low-fat hard cheese is healthier and it has the lower sodium. Next, we have the black bean dip, no salt, no salt added, instead of the high processed French onion dip. As a reminder, the French onion dip was never a reimbursable amount of credible items. Number three, we have the edamame instead of Vienna sausages. This is a great alternative that you guys can use in your programs. We also have the deviled egg instead of the mini corn dogs. I do realize that most of you have the CN labeled corn dogs. However, making those simple alternatives could also help you with your program. Also, as you know, we have the lower fat yogurt instead of the high sugar yogurt. And as you know, we do have a uh, sugar has to be low with the new CACFP program. Most children ages one to eight years are eating more fruit and meeting recommended intake for fruit. Offering fresh produce in season provides quality fruit at the best price. You may try preparing fruits in a different way. 
Firm fruit like apples, pears, and peaches can be softened by warming for about a minute. Most children are not meeting the recommended amount of vegetables daily. Offering vegetables for snacks can help children meet the recommended daily servings. Fresh carrot sticks and broccoli can be offered in place of chip and dip. You can slowly increase vegetables and fruit weekly by offering them more often. If you are serving vegetables at a snack one time a week, then offer a vegetable at a snack two times a week. Fruits and vegetables, fresh, frozen, or canned can be offered. Your menu could include a local produce item purchased from a local farmer. When using canned fruits and vegetables, choose fruit and natural juice or vegetables with no added salt or low sodium. If you have canned fruit in syrup or regular vegetables, drain fruit and vegetables in a colander and rinse to reduce sugar and sodium. Serve oven baked potato and sweet potato wedges instead of fried potatoes or pre-fried potatoes. By roasting vegetables at a high heat in the oven causes vegetables to become crusty. This boosts the flavor of vegetables, adding herbs and spices such as garlic or onion powder, oregano and basil instead of salt. Butter or sauces to vegetables boost flavor. Another flavor booster is offering a healthier dip like yogurt or hummus with vegetables. Okay, now we have a great additional slides about some other healthy options. So choose fresh, frozen, or canned, or canned fruits and vegetables without added sugar, fat, and sodium when planning your snacks. At first picture, we have some apple slices instead of the sweetened apple sauce. Next, we have the fruit with all natural juice instead of fruit with syrup. Next, we have the homemade sweet potato wedges instead of the tater tots. Next, we have the broccoli instead of the broccoli with cheese. And we also have the bell pepper strips instead of using those potato chips. As a reminder, with potato chips, you always want to check that you have a CN label on a lot of your processed um, items. Children are not meeting recommendations for whole grain. At least half the grains served should be whole grain. Whole grains have key nutrients that lower risk for heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and obesity. A whole grain has three parts bran, germ, and endosperm. Whole grains include whole wheat bread, brown rice, oatmeal, whole cornmeal, whole wheat crackers. Too many refined grains are being eaten, such as white bread, rolls, crackers, pasta, and rice. These grains are not whole grains. Either the bran germ or endosperm is missing. Grain-based desserts or sweet baked goods are high in fat and sugar and do not count as a snack or part of a meal. They include donuts, cookies, Rice Krispie treats, cakes, toaster pastries, Pop-Tarts, brownies, and granola bars. As of October 1st, 2017, grain-based desserts cannot count towards the grain component. Okay, so next we're going to look at some whole grain options. Offering a whole grain snack can help you meet your requirement for, ser for serving half the grains as whole grains. As a reminder on the CACFP program, you are required to serve one whole grain item each day. At first picture, we have a corn tortilla instead of a fried corn taco shell. Next, we have an oatmeal muffin instead of Fig Newton. As a reminder, the Fig Newtons cookies those type of items are no longer credible under the CACFP program. Half a whole grain bagel instead of a mini Pillsbury biscuit. Whole grain cracker instead of Ritz crackers. Whole grain pita instead of tortilla chip. Also, remember to always use your food buying guide when making purchase decisions about the amounts of food you need for your program. When trying new foods, keep offering them. Children need to be offered new fruits and vegetables many times before they like them. Fruits and vegetables can be served a variety of ways. Serve them with foods they are familiar with. Encouragement may come from watching a friend eat them. Start with small amounts of the new food. Have fun with fruits and vegetables. Choose a day of the week to offer an unfamiliar fruit or vegetable at least once a month. 
you may give the day a name like Wahoo Wednesday. Discuss the fruit or vegetable. Include where it is grown and how it is grown. Give the benefits of the fruit or vegetable. For example, kiwi is grown on a vine in China. Show a picture. Another name is Chinese gooseberry. Kiwi is the size of a large hen egg. Kiwi is picked when the seeds have turned black. A whole kiwi provides the daily recommendation for potassium and vitamin C. Potassium is a mineral that helps with blood pressure regulation, growth and development, and many other benefits. Vitamin C is a vitamin that may prevent some types of cell damage, antioxidant. It also plays a role in immune function. Immune function. Another example, avocado is a nutrient-dense fruit with almost 20 vitamins and minerals in a serving. In the U.S., it is grown in California. Show a picture. You can tell when avocados are ripe by gently squeezing the fruit. It should be firm and slightly give when squeezed. It is one of the few fruits that have good fats. Avocados are high in potassium. Foods high in potassium can help lower blood pressure by lessening the harmful effects of sodium. Potassium helps your body work properly. You can use the seed of the avocado and start a plant for the classroom. Offering a variety of vegetables from the dark green, red, and orange vegetables, legumes, beans, and peas, starchy vegetables like potatoes and other vegetables will help the child meet nutrient needs. Your program can help children you serve meet the recommendations for the food groups through healthy snacks. Healthy snacks do not have to be more expensive and can be added without affecting your budget. You have a vital role in meeting energy and nutrient needs to promote growth in children. Even the smallest program can create a nutrition and physical activity policy. Your nutrition and physical activity policy should be current. What you're offering now, this communicates your purpose by supporting the changes you want to make to your child care center. A fruit and vegetable policy example could be snacks include either fruits or vegetables at least once each day. You can meet this policy through a quality improvement plan. Three other sample nutrition policies might be vegetables and fruits are served at snack at least once a day. Salt-free seasonings are used to flavor food only. Fresh frozen or no salt added vegetables are purchased most of the time. Offer nutrient-dense snacks, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains for celebrations instead of the typical calorie-dense snack of chips, cookies, and cake. Healthy celebrations can reinforce nutrition messages you practice and model during the week. When you provide nutrition education, you are supporting nutrition education messages. Nutrition education should be given to children, parents, and staff. By promoting healthy habits in your program indicates you want the children under your care to be healthy. Together, we can battle childhood obesity in Arkansas. Next, we will discuss some healthy snack combination ideas. Okay, on this slide, we have some snack ideas for ages three to five year olds. This is compatible with the CACFP meal pattern. We have a half corn tortilla with two tablespoons of black bean dip. We have a fourth a cup of no sugar added vanilla yogurt plus a half a kiwi sliced. Half a bell pepper cut into strips or you can do two mini bell peppers or half a cup of broccoli plus two, two tablespo tablespoons of dip. Uh, it's also made with yogurt. So on that, uh, dip you see there, that was a homemade one they, they did, so they did not need a CN label. You would just always want to keep your recipes for your compliance review. Next we have half a serving of banana bread square or four ounces of low fat milk, plus a half a medium apple slice. As a reminder on the banana bread, you can serve this under the new CACFP meal pattern. Just check the label and to ensure that it is in compliance when looking at your grains. We, next, we have a lettuce wrap, one lettuce leaf with a fourth a cup of shredded carrots, added some two tablespoons of hummus dip. We also have fourth a cup of no sugar added vanilla yogurt, 
with half a kiwi slice. This slide, we're looking at snack ideas for ages 6 to 18 years of age. They meet the CACFP meal pattern. We have one corn tortilla with a fourth a cup of black bean dip. Remember when you're buying your corn tortillas for the ages of six years old and up, you needed to say 28 grams or more when looking at the food buying guide in your labels. We also have a half a cup of no sugar added vanilla yogurt with a whole kiwi slice, three to four, three fourths uh, bell pepper cut into strips, R3 mini bell peppers, R3 fourths cup broccoli fourlets, plus two tablespoons of dip. Again, this is another one that they made with yogurt, so that makes that credible, and it was a homemade recipe. We also have, a pre like the previous example of that one serving of banana bread, um, R, eight ounce of low-fat milk, plus three-fourths medium apple slice, and two lettuce leaves, plus half a cup of shredded carrots, and we also have hummus. So this concludes our webinar on healthy snacks. Do you guys have any questions you would like to ask? We also have Mariska Jordan here from National School Lunch Program, so we can address any of those questions at this time also. This webinar um, is also recorded and it will be available for viewing. Thank you for joining us today. And if you have any questions, we can also send out answers via email. Thank you for joining us.